of Sampella in Wakatobi National Park in southeast Sulawesi. Every child is born a twin. At birth, ritual experts who have overseen the development of a woman's pregnancy deliver both her human child and its twin, the placenta. Its fibrous form believed to be the child's octopus sibling. After birth, the placenta is returned to its home in the sea, establishing a lifelong relationship between humans and the spirits that inhabit the ocean in the form of marine life. This is the unseen world of the Bajau of Sampella, who call themselves the Sama. Their stories are an example of how biodiversity and cultural diversity are inexorably linked, and how we cannot protect one without defending the other. For the Bajau, the marine environment is not only the source of their sustenance, it's the home of ancestors and animal counterparts that are ever-present in their everyday lives and activities. It's also the realm of Bojango, the Sama ancestor, who they recognize as a Quranic figure of knowledge. The wind, the rains, the phases of the moon, the patterns of the waves are a map that the Sama follow back year after year to Bojango's fields below the sea fields that have been utilized by their forebearers for centuries with the permission of their ancestors. The Sama are part of a larger group of seafarers who inhabit the oceans around Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, East Timor, and Papua New Guinea. The Bajau of Southeast Sulawesi have traditionally lived their lives in boats on the ocean and in the mangroves where land and ocean overlap. The Bajau traditional territory corresponds to the Coral Triangle, a six million square kilometer area that contains some of the Earth's most diverse ocean life. This includes 37% of the world's coral reef species and 56% of the fish species found in the Indo-Pacific marine region. Bajau communities are frontline communities, witnesses to the impacts that climate change and overfishing have on one of the world's most important and most threatened marine regions. But as the Bajau bear witness, they are also among the most vulnerable to the effects that environmental change have on social, cultural, and economic life around the archipelago. Sama beliefs Rituals and traditions are part of a cosmology of the sea that incorporates their knowledge of the Coral Triangle's marine environment and their practice of Islam. It's based on intimate knowledge of the renewal cycles and habits of marine species that are expressed through spiritual rules about how humans should interact with the ocean and those who inhabit it. It's an ethical system one that governs if and how resources should be used, that parallels contemporary conservation strategies like no-take zones and the selective harvesting of marine species. But the Sama culture that allows them to live sustainably with the sea teeters on the brink of eradication. As a result of government policies and for practical reasons, the Sama established a more sedentary community in Wakatobi National Park in the early 1970s. The shift to a more sedentary lifestyle, along with the effect of evolving resources, um, governing of resources in the national park, meant that the Sama had to give up many of their nomadic practices that had allowed them to harvest resources from a very wide maritime territory. More integration into neighboring land-based communities also exposed the Sama to prejudice and discrimination against their beliefs, their way of life, and their interpretation of Islam. 
Government services and policies that directly affect this village and the ocean that surrounds it are largely determined by Nan Bajau. They see the Sama insistence to remain on the sea and to continue to practice a culture that has arisen from a life lived in that environment as a resistance to the ideals of modern life in Indonesia. At the same time, Sama nets are coming up emptier every year. The impending collapse of Southeast Asian fisheries due to climate change and overfishing have decimated the marine life around their village. Older generation of Sama interpret this as a sign of Bojango's anger at those Sama fishermen who resorted to destructive fishing practices as the once vast ocean territory that they fished became more and more restricted and there were less and less fish to be had. Today, Sama youth know that they face an uncertain future as it is clear that the ocean can no longer support their community. But if the Bajau were to live without the sea, then their culture and the ecological knowledge that it contains can only be maintained if the next generation sees the value in carrying on their traditions. At a time when environmental pressures threaten their existence as people of the sea, policies and prejudices that discriminate against diverse ways of life communicate to Sama youth that they don't have any culture that's worth saving. Conservationists and uh, government officials often have difficulty incorporating the Bajau into their projects because they see Bajau beliefs as a hindrance rather than as a contribution to scientific knowledge. Conservation efforts often focus on changing human behavior in the face of environmental degradation worldwide. It sees cultures as being lost as the environments that shape them are threatened and disappear. Indigenous peoples around the world are beginning to voice their roles as stewards and protectors of particular habitats worldwide. Habitats where human culture has shaped the way that people should interact with and sustain their environments. Nowhere is this more important or more evident than in Indonesia where environmental destruction threatens the nation's resources and diverse communities around the archipelago face discrimination and environmental loss. The key to a sustainable future might be held in the very societies that are losing their homes and their abilities to practice their ways of life. This means that we cannot determine a priori what kind of diversity is good or bad. We have to foster diverse life ways for the potential that they hold for our human public and for the resources that we need to support it. It's time that we see the wisdom of these unseen worlds as a contribution to addressing environmental degradation around the world. As an anthropologist who works for a graduate program that brings together people of diverse regions, religions, and backgrounds in the pursuit of a just and multicultural Indonesia, I believe that the greatest potential that we have to solve our global problems lies not just in recognizing difference or even in tolerating difference, but in valuing diversity as an ever-evolving repository of human innovation imagination, and knowledge. Digital storyteller Matt Colicello and I are making media that aims to elevate the perspectives of people like Fasama, who struggle to have their voices heard and their culture seen as something that's valuable. We're making a film about the Bajau and Wakatobi, not just to talk about the link between biodiversity and cultural diversity, but also to share Sama stories with other young people around Indonesia in the hopes that it will inspire them to see diversity in all of its forms as something that's worth protecting. For me, defending diversity is an ethical orientation. 
I believe that all of our lives are twin to the unseen world below the sea. As our friend Bajau activist Iskandar says, it is the ocean that determines our lives, not our lives that determine the ocean. Iskandar says, if to give up Bajau life means to live by boundaries that aren't really there, not just the boundaries between regions, but boundaries that separate people from their environment, boundaries that separate tradition from religion, then I choose to be Bajau. Even though we have given up our nomadic life on boats, we remain on the sea. Our culture was built from the sea. If you skinned a Bajau, the very core of him would be the sea. The deepest part of him is the sea. Skandar hopes that his children will be able to choose to be Bajau. But he sees his culture and the knowledge that it contains disappearing with the sea life around them. Our ability to join the Sama and other indigenous peoples around the world in resisting this kind of loss lies in our collective efforts to protect diversity, both human and other than human. And ethics of diversity can start in the recognition that the seen and unseen worlds of human culture are connected, and that it's the boundaries that we imagine between humans and between human and other than human life on Earth that are truly ephemeral. Human diversity is one side of our shared potential. We have to protect it not only for individuals or individual communities, but for the potential that it holds for all life on this Earth in the future. Thank you.